Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon. Thus says the Bard in his play, Twelfth Night. However, in my session with the respected Dr. Kiran Bedi Ma'am, I learned that no matter what, greatness must be utilized. This has helped me grow and develop both my behavior and attitude. Moreover, during the course of the session, Dr. Kiran Bedi Ma'am shared some of her valuable insights with us, which were both realistic and truly life lessons. Hence, if you too are interested in developing yourself and growing as a person, then join the book reading sessions. Thank you. My hobbies are dancing, singing and cooking. I learn classical dance and I love practicing it. I'm also an anchor in a UAE television channel. Here are a few glimpses of my hobbies. Hey guys, it's me Vijay Naina back with you guys in a fantastic, fabulous and exciting episode of Kids in My hobbies are singing and creative writing. My talent is dancing. I've been studying it for four years now. And I also enjoy drawing and painting in my free time. These are some of my artworks. My hobbies include public speaking, dancing and acting. I'm also a debater, poet and essayist. I'm an avid reader and read books across various genres including, but not limited to, fantasy, autobiography and history. I've been writing poetry and essays since I was 10 years old and learning dance for about 4 years now. My hobby is to read mostly fictional books and to bake using recipes that can be found on YouTube. And my talent is to draw. I draw on both paper as well as digital art. And here are some glimpses. My hobbies are listening to music, singing and dancing. Here are the glimpses of me dancing. My hobbies include painting, drawing, artworks. I love reading book, cooking and singing. My favorite book is Infantile Mice, written by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. In this book, there are several questions asked by students from different schools which was visited by APJ Abdul Kalam. My favorite question was asked by a boy in Anand Gujarat that was, Who is our enemy? When a smart girl answered that our enemy is poverty. A Dust on in Delhi by Meena Nair is a story of Rajit Sultana, daughter of Iltamish and Queen of Delhi. The story of Sultan Iltamish's eldest daughter and rightful hair is often forgot or vaguely described in history books. Meena Knight's retelling of Razid's endeavors is known to forgotten queens throughout history. I love this book because it reminds me to not be bound by societal norms and gender restrictions. When you want something, all the universe will conspire around you till you achieve it. As you know, this is a famous quote by Paolo Coelho in his book, The Alchemist. It is a story about a young man who dreams of traveling around the world to find a treasure that has never been found. He travels to exotic markets in North Africa and then to Egyptian desert where fateful encounter with the alchemist awaits him. From sky to sky, from sea to sea, steady do I stand and never will I flee. These are some lines from my favorite book, Beauty Bomb, written by Claire Legbat. This book has commendable creativity and is one of the best examples of historical fiction in the recent years. This book has a distinct writing style which narrates the point of view of two different characters spanning across millennials. Thank you. My favorite books is Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief by Rick Ronan. It is a light-hearted fantasy about a modern 12-year-old boy who learns that his true father is Poseidon, the Greek god of the sea. Percy sets out to become a hero by undertaking a quest across the United States to find the entrance to the underworld and to stop a war between the gods. My favorite book, The Theory of Everything by Stephen Hawkins. He 
presents the book with a new look at our universe, how it began, our views on old physics and prior theories about the creation of the universe. I love this book because Hawking gave us a new look at our world, our universe and ourselves. Say Dhari Ma to all of you, we welcome you all from Sharja. We welcome our audience. We welcome our audience from Sharja. Very welcome. It's our 111th book reading session. You're tiny, you're young children, but doing so much. Ma's grace growing so well. Ma bless you. Ji, mommy. Yeah, <laughs> every batch, every batch reveals what a bright future we have through these young girls. They're reading, they're dancing, they're learning, they're creating, they're writing, they're cooking. Even cooking, I'm so glad that they're learning. Some of them are so fond of cooking and um, creative writing, public speaking. So many good, so talented. Drawing, uh, that's very good. But the best part is across this board, this batch, almost five, six, five out of them are very fond of dancing. That's a very interesting thing. And of course, most of you are drawing almost all of you. Now, these are very creative uh, habits. These are therapeutic. Friends, children, they are therapeutic. In fact, if you go enroll for certain meditation and other programs, I think the first thing they also include in their program is to dance. And maybe even cook, because that's also therapeutic. Drawing is also therapeutic. Writing is also therapeutic because you are then with yourself. So it's very nice and congratulations. Keep up these good habits of uh, writing, drawing, dancing, and creative writing. And even cooking, because cooking for you, rather than being a drudgery, which for uh, in some, in our past, some cases it was, it's no more. Now it's a creative art and it's also profession. If you like cooking, then you can be creative in cooking. So it's very, very nice. Thank you very much for a lovely batch. And also th uh, next, what I love to see is that you've all been right, reading the right kinds of books, inspirational books. You're, you're, uh, you are further uh, invigorating yourselves with more ideas. So welcome Naina, Ananya, Anona, Ellen, Alvina, and Marie. And you're all from Sharjah. That's very good. I, Sharjah is a, is a very unique place to be in. It's full of concrete architecture. Each one is a design by itself. So tell us a little about Sharjah, Naina. Naina I'll come Sharjah to is a beautiful Yeah. Uh, like a lot of museums are there, beach, many things are there we can see in Sharjah. And I was born and brought up in Sharjah itself. So I've seen a lot in Sharjah. Do you know the language by now? Actually, we are learning um, Arabic in, from grade one in our school. So we know all the alphabets. We know how to read. And we know some, like, I know how to speak also. Some. That's a very good talent. It's a very good practice it. In fact, can you speak a few words in Arabic? Uh, okay, yeah. so when we see someone first, we greet them by saying Aslam Wa Alaikum and they will answer back Wa Alaikum Aslam. And then um, we ask them uh, how I uh, like Shu um, Mushkil and then they'll say Alhamdulillah, saying that we are fine by God's grace. And yeah, ma'am, these are some things. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. I'm sure all of you, um, Ananya, you also know about Sharjah, uh, uh, Arabic? Oh, ma'am, I'm trying to uh, speak right now. Learning, is it that part of your schooling? School? Of yes, ma'am. So learn, idea is to learn uh, the language where you're in. Speak, learn. Even if you speak a mistake, make a mistake, so be it. Learn the language. Now that you are there, and ha knowing Arabic and uh, the the whole Arab region actually is good friends of India. 
They are very good friends of India. UAE is a very good friends of India. They are uh, are solid friends, and they are very good uh, friends in thick and thin. So all of you, if you know Arabic and speak Arabic, it will do India proud, and they'll also feel good. Anuna, you know know how much Arabic? Yeah, ma'am. Um, so, 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 Anna is me. Anuna Shukin means um, my name is Anuna. And Kaifa um, Halakum means how are you? Anna Bihail means I'm fine. And Sabah Noor means uh, good evening. And Sabah Al Khair is what you reply when someone wishes you. Look, and do you read uh, uh, literature also? Do you read Arabic literature or uh, Persian literature, whatever? Yeah, ma'am. In our library, there are Arabic books. So uh, according to our interest, we can choose them if you want. Hmm. It's good. Helen, you? Uh, yeah, ma'am. Same as Anuna said, Anna is me, Helen. We are learning Arabic. So you speak. My, I, Al Alvina, you? Now, I won't say that I'm very good at it. I do speak a bit, like not much. I don't try to learn though. So um, amongst you girls, you can speak because you are in schools where majority of, how many of the natives are with you? How many natives, Mary? Ma'am, in our school, uh, mostly Indians are there. Not many uh, Arabs, actually. Where do they study? Uh, Ma'am, uh, there are actually other schools, so uh, there are separate Arab schools in Sharjah and uh, other Emirates in the UAE. So, um, yeah, they studied there. Are you people, uh, anybody can be admitted in Arab school or are they only res restricted to Arab? No, ma'am, I don't think it's a restriction. I'm not sure. I don't know much about that, uh, but I, th I think you can join. But they teach you mostly uh, everything in Arabic. Huh, that focus must be more Arabic. Yeah. What are and the interests? What are the inter interests you've seen comparatively of the Arabic children? Uh, ma'am, we haven't. Uh, I haven't met many, but uh, they do. Uh, they uh, are very good at Arabic uh, and. They, uh, but they struggle in English and other uh, languages. Mm. They don't, uh, I don't think they teach other languages in those schools. I'm not sure. Mm. What are they good at? What have you seen as their talent? What talent do you see of them? Uh, Ma'am, I haven't actually met any. Naina, anybody, any one of you? What is the specific talent you see in them? Ma'am, uh, their dances, their special dances are there during UA National Days. We see a lot of their uh, um, activities there. And I love the most is their food. Like a lot of sweets are there. Arabic foods are the special things. And uh, I also have some Emirati friends. Like I've talked to them. And they um, they are not too good at English. But they always speak in Arabic as they always respect their language. In what I could feel. And yeah, ma'am. These are things I could experience. You got Arabic friends? Anna? Anuna, you got Arabic friends? Alan, Alvina, Marie, you got Arabic friends? Ma'am, I don't personally have any friends, but in our school, the teachers who teach Arabic are Emirati and come from Arabic countries. And uh, by far, they have been like really sweet to us and they're really nice uh, teaching their language. So. Do they play games? Uh, Do they play Yeah. Ma'am, they participate in many of our events. Mm -hmm. They are like uh, on when it's uh, India's Republic Day, they like to dress up in Indian clothes. And when mm -hmm. it was autumn, they dressed up in Kerala, uh, uh, the traditional dress of Kerala. What are they curious about to know about India? Ma'am, they want to know the culture and the food like we eat. Mm -hmm. Mainly the culture, yeah. Do you invite them home? For two Indian food? <laughs> no. You should invite them. Invite them to Indian food. Would they not come? Uh, no, ma'am. I'm pretty. There are many Indian restaurants in Sharjah, so I'm pretty sure they've tried at least. Yeah. 
it's to make friends with them uh, my alvina i think it's to make friends with them make a special effort to make good arabic friends ma'am yeah. i think because uae is a country with an indian majority than actual arabs i think because of that they are very familiar with indian culture and when we do when we come back from home from india when we come back to uae uh, we like to take give them food and <clears throat> food and sweets we do that often and they are always very enthusiastic about it yeah and clothes what about clothes ma'am they always love dressing up in indian clothes every time there's an occasion you can see in, especially in school for independence day and festivals you can always see at least couple of arabic teachers in their traditional costumes and yeah indian clothes yes ma'am indian clothes so you can give them some khadi you can give them some khadi kurti khadi kurtis like this see you can it's my objective now is what i'm trying to say that you since you are in a very friendly country and a country which matters uh, a lot to india is to make good friends because that was be you are like goodwill ambassadors you goodwill ambassadors of india so making friends with them means cementing the indian bonds with them you understand so when you are in a, a foreign country like that knowing their culture celebrating their culture knowing their language speaking their language inviting them home to indian food giving them a gift from india when you go buy a khas kar especially khadi kurta kurti khadi so when you give them something khadi which is woven and khadi is linked with gandhi ji so something woven from by hand they will love it it's way from the mahatma gandhi's country so make good better friends you never know you may work with them tomorrow so uh, when you are in another country use this opportunity to build better bonds and family to family have dinners exchange invite them home for dinner indian dinner and some of you are good in cooking so cook for them right right try and do that and speak more and more of of arabic with them that will be, create a like somebody speaking in hindi by they hindi, speaking in hindi would you like it would you like it if they speak more in hindi with you not english hindi so ma'am they do you... try to often communicate us uh, to us in uh, malayalam sometimes if we ah. tell them what to say they try to communicate with us in malayalam and occasionally hindi because yeah. you know, arabic and hindi have a lot of things in common so they do mm-hmm. do that often good so malayalam hindi whatever language but if they speak english is fine english is a bond it's a common language now of the region but arabic exchange malayalam exchange whatever language you are uh, you would like to it's good so what i'm trying to say is forge friendships at the youth level because you are going to be one day the leadership level you will become corporate leaders you will become at the heads of departments of education enterprise you never know what all you become all over the world but your arabic roots and friends will stand india in good stead because they too will be at the good positions as they grow and those those um, friendships made at such a young age they last forever and stay in contact stay connected as you grow today thanks to the technology you can stay connected emails whatsapps instagrams linkedin facebooks all these are helpful to you okay naina let's begin with you the monuments of india yes ma'am so today i am speaking about the golden temple and the golden temple it's actually also called harmandar sahib or darbar sahib and it is actually a gurudwara which is located in amritsar punjab india and the founders of this golden temple is uh, guru ramdas and also guru arjan and it was built in 
with Adi Granth. Adi Granth is actually a holy religious scripture. So they built it with that also. And also Maharaja Ranjit Singh, who established the Sikh empire, he also gave his uh, contributions. And he overlaid the golden foil in 1830, and which is why we called it as the golden temple. And um, one of the famous um, things which happened was in 1984, the Prime Minister Srimadhi Indra Gandhi, as uh, she had sent the Indian army to um, in behalf of the Operation Blue Star, which uh, caused um, you know the deaths of thousand civilians and um, you know soldiers, and it also caused uh, damage. But after this 1984 damage, it was rebuilt again. And the most famous thing in this golden temple is their large, largest kitchen free, free kitchen, as they serve around 100,000 people's meal per day. And uh, also in this Gurudwara, we can see four entrances. And in this four entrances, we can believe in the Sikhism, as they say, that um, in Sikhism, it says that they welcome everyone who believes in different faiths to visit this Gurudwara. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yes, all faiths visit. All faiths visited. Ananya, what is yours? Which is your favorite monument of India? Ma'am, I'm going to speak about Taj Mahal. So, I, uh, Taj Mahal, it was built by the fifth Mughal Emperor, Shah Jahan, in 1631 in memory of his third, but the most favorite wife, in fact, his soulmate, Mumtaz Mahal, a Muslim Persian, Persian princess. She died while accompanying her husband in Brahanpur in a campaign to crush a rebellion after giving birth to their 13th child. The Taj Mahal Maslam is made up of white marble, which the color of the seems to change according to the time of the day. And the entire Maslam complex spans nearly 17 hectares, which means it takes 42 acres or about 20 big football pitches. The Taj Mahal is built of red sandstone and covered in large plates of marble. The artisans who helped in the construction of this world wonder hail from many different countries and regions, including Central Asia, Iran, Syria, and Turkey. It took them 20 years and to complete this momentous project and over 20,000 artisans were involved. The materials needed to build the Taj Mahal were transported with the help of over 1,000 elephants. It was mainly white marble and the red sandstone that required for the transportation. And it was sourced from all over India and from the Middle East. Red sandstone is common in Persian architecture and can be seen in different different uh, structures like Jama Masjid and Jama Masjid and Res Fort, both in Delhi. While white marble was used as a representation of the divine. And the shimmering white marble used in the construction of the Taj Mahal changes color according to the time of the day, from the uplifting yellow of sunrise to the desolate deep blue of night. In order to add a holy aura to the place, the walls of monument are covered with beautiful calligraphy and pieta dura. Pieta dura is a method of inlaying marble with precious stones like amber, coral, jade, and lapis lazuli. If you step inside, you can find many beautiful tulips, lilies, irises, poppies, and nasturtiums inlaid into the wall. They are elegantly decorated using pieta dura, which means a jigsaw, like inlay technique. To make these plants lifelike, 28 types of precious and colorful stones are even used, such as multicolor agates and chasa dinars, bloodstone and granite. Many of these precious stones were stripped off and taken by the British Army during the Indian Matinee of 1857. The Taj Mahal is often called the epitome of the Mughal architecture and was acknowledged by the acknowledged so by where are you, Ananya, where are you reading it from? Ma'am, I'm reading by myself. 
Are you speaking yourself or are you reading it from somewhere? No, ma'am, I'm read, um, speaking. Oh, you learnt it all by heart? Yes, ma'am. Oh, lovely. Yes, Very thank well you, done. Very well thank done. You. Ma'am, can I continue? Yeah. And the Taj Mahal is often called the epitome of Mughal architecture and was acknowledged by the of jewel of uh, Muslim art by the UNESCO. With the chief architect, Ustad Ahmad, in charge of construction, the Taj Mahal was um, completed within 20 years with, with the help of 20,000 artisans, workers, and stone mansion, and as well as 1,000 elephants were used to carry the materials. The ensure pro and the entire project was um, about 32 million rupees. And yes, when and the gray gate looks like a defensive and is the entrance to the garden of the Taj Mahal. And it is also, it's also, um, the gate is tone toned with the primary material being red sandstone and inlay of marble. And the, all the, it's also, um, it also significant, the garden also significant and the holy rivers of the India are incorporated of the designs of the gardens, which is divided into four quarters by four intersecting canals that meet at an elevated central lotus pond. The, the gate is also two-toned by red sandstone and the structure is positioned and um, and it is the gate is two uh, the gate is two toned with the primary material being red sandstone and white marble inlay. The structure is positioned in a such a manner that it separates the inner courtyard from the gardens, creating symbolic passage between the terrestrial life illustrated by the inner courtyard and spiritual life represented by the gardens and Maslow. The Taj Mahal is one of the seven wonders of the world and on the top of everyone's list while visiting India. This incredible wide marble structure is not only beautiful, but also a testament to love that Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan had for his wife, Mumtaz Mahal. Thank you. Thank you, Ananya. Uh, my message to you, you students, even to the demonstrative learning team is, A, um, our object is for you, for you to imbibe the understanding of the monument and visualize it. Visualize it and describe it as your heart speaks. Basically, it's to internalize because you never know this knowledge will come very handy to you all the time. But I'm very happy that you are researching. You're reading, writing, doesn't matter. But the question is, is to actually make this into your own knowledge. Our object is for you to, like we want the book reading to become internalized. Similarly, monument understanding also to become your knowledge. And it's good that you're researching. I'm very happy. Thank you, Ananya. Thank you, Nayana, so far. Anona, let's see yours. So uh, uh, not more than three minutes. So go ahead. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, I will be speaking about the Qutub Minar. The Qutub Minar is a minaret located Have you had in New York. Yes, ma'am. Have you had an opportunity to see it? No, ma'am. Okay. Have you visited Delhi? No, ma'am. None of you visited Delhi? Sarja, you are, sorry. Ananya, have you visited Taj Mahal? No, ma'am. Naina, you? What you talked about? Ma'am, I also didn't visit. But I'm really uh, interested to visit, ma'am. Sharja and Delhi are not far. You must have been visiting Bombay quite often. Or no? Oh, your holiday could be like this, asking your parents to take you to these places for history. That's what you could request your saying, birthday present, take us to see history in India. Okay, Anuna, your, your turn, Kutub Minar. Yes, yes ma'am. 
The Qutub Minar is a minaret located in New Delhi, and it is often referred to as the Victory Tower. It is surrounded by uh, ancient and medieval ruins, and as collectively it is known as the Qutub Complex. Uh, it is a five-storied minaret made of red sandstone and etched with different uh, verses from the Quran. It was built, uh, the first story was built by Qutbuddin Aibak, an emperor in the Delhi Sultanate, and the reminder was constructed by his successors over a period of 28 years. Uh, it is one of the best representations of the Muslim rule in India. And the meticulously carved inscriptions, geometric and Arabist patterns, have been touched up and perfected over the years. Qutb Minar is also very famous for its uh, resilience against all natural and uh, man-made uh, hardships. Uh, now the, it is a very popular tourist site and a source of pride for India as it once again showcases India's rich cultural heritage and history. Thank you. Very nice. Helen, your turn. Yes, ma'am. So today I'm going to talk about Ajanta Caves. Ajanta caves, yes, caves are a group of 29 ancient Buddhist caves in India. Uh, they are famous for their rocket architecture and forces. Uh, they are located in Maharashtra uh, and are also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, the caves depict uh, the Jatka tale stories of the uh, ancient Buddhist people, and then Ajanta caves have been well preserved by ASI Archaeological Survey of India with multiple conservation work, uh, work done in the 20th century. Uh, they, they contain Shatya, calls for worship, and workers for mo uh, monks. Ajanda forces are cravings and best considered of the Ajanda forces and cravings are best considering some uh, considering for some of the best examples of ancient Indian art. Uh, art. Uh, they were built over many centuries by different groups of people. Yeah, that's it. I'm from the Ajanta Caves. Thank you, Ellen. Alvina? Am I audible, ma'am? Yep. So I'm going to be talking about the Gipi of India. The Gipi of India is an art monument built in 20th century in Bombay, India. It was erected to commemorate the landing of King Emperor George V, the first British monarch to visit India. So the Gateway of India resembles a pretty conventional triumphal arc in concept, but architecturally it is modeled on 16th century Gujarati work. It is a living marvel of architectural hard work whose height is about eight stories tall. This monument, surprisingly enough, has witnessed actually most of India's historical moments whether it be terrorist attacks on the Taj Hotel or seeing the last British troops leave India. This makes it actually a great symbol of Indian independence and pride. And surprisingly enough, it was built in commemoration of British royalty, which I think is rather ironic. And yeah, thank you. That's it. Have you seen it? Uh, I have not had the honor of seeing it yet. I do. Oh, Mumbai is close by for you. Yeah. Always so have, you, to have you traveled to India, any one of you? All of us, ma'am, actually. We Did usually go on vacation. Most of us Did go there. Right? But which city do you go to? Where was your last city when you went to India? Ma'am, we go to Kerala. Wow. Um, I go to Kerala and I think many of us also go to Kerala. Ma'am, ma'am, I go to Tamil Nadu. Yeah. Ah, right. And most of and us are South Indians, so we go to the south. Back home to South. Tamil Nadu or Kerala or even Hyderabad, Telangana, Andhra? Anybody? No. Where do you go, Mary? Ma'am, uh, I go to Kerala. So they're basically all from Kerala. Yes. Ellen, where do you go? I'm Kerala. Achha. So all of you basically from Kerala, is it? All six of you? And Ananya is from Tamil Nadu? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Okay, good. That's fine. But uh, maybe next time when you go, request your parents to touch base with you a little beyond Kerala and Tamil Nadu, beyond South, 
to see uh, see other places travel to little little more to do you have friends and relatives in delhi no i went to maharashtra mumbai i could see the gateway of india also and the elephant ah. caves hmm. yeah lot nagpur such places i visited actually ah. Ma'am, I've gone to Bangalore to visit my aunt who lives there. Ma'am, I plan on going on Bangalore soon to visit my sister, who studies there. So, yeah. So, big basically becomes remains the south south belt. Yes, ma'am. I was in a school in Trivandrum a few days ago. and i was i had asked these 3 400 children sitting there saying um um saying um <coughs> sorry um uh, any one of you re- uh, seen delhi i asked any one of you any one of them seen delhi you would be surprised not one raised their hand not even one and the uh, it will be good if the north sees south and south sees north north should also see south but i've seen south indians north indians are very fond of south they very fond of southern temples and um, so they do travel a lot their holidays actually south they travel to uh, chennai they travel to hyderabad they travel to bangalore they travel to certainly god's own country in trivandrum and kerala kerala is a favorite uh, uh, destination for tourism in india from outside from outside kerala so but i saw none of these children had seen even delhi so how would they understand how big india is how vast india is how variety varied india is so maybe you children can ask your parents request your parents to bring you uh, somehow if you can of course you have to have friends and relatives but depends problem again is language but language is not an issue english is all over okay mary you ma'am i will be speaking about the hawa mahal uh Ma'am, all pieces of architecture have had an inspiration, and when it comes to uh, the Har Mahal, it's no different. The Har Mahal is a palace in the city of Jaipur, India, and was built from red and pink sandstone. Jaipur is another city to visit for you, or Rajasthan would be very, very interesting for all of us. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, the Har Mahal. Varanasi, the Ganges, is another. place very interesting ganges to visit the ganga and the varanasi now it's very refurbished carry on mary okay. ma'am this palace is situated uh, on the edge of city palace in jaipur uh, and extends still zanana which is a women's chamber um speaking of jaipur uh, jaipur is uh, uh, itself was itself a marvel of its time um of its time and uh, it is uh, the palace is a back view but um uh, a back view of city palace city palace which is situated in jaipur in a place where most monuments are painted pink uh, that's giving the uh, name city uh, uh, the uh, pink city uh what this is why did it why was it why is it called pink city ma'am because uh, most of the um, monuments in that area were painted pink for whom uh, so when you researched maybe you could have researched this why is it pink okay yeah you see when you research all of you girls when you research go a little more go a little more deep it's not for uh, book reading it's for your knowledge 
expansion of general knowledge. So when you start reading, find out more and more and more if you can, unless you're exams. You got exams and you got no time to study anything else. But this is important. After all, you will be asked as Indians anywhere about India. All the time. Understand? Okay, go ahead. Anything more, Pitti? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, this palace was built in 1799 by Maharaja Savai Pratap Singh. He was much inspired by the unique structure of Ketri Mahal that he built his own grand historical palace. Uh, this palace has a five-floor exterior, which is akin to a honeycomb, which has uh, 953 small windows called jarukas, decorated with uh, beautiful uh, lattice work. And this design uh, allows cool air to flow through the Venturi effect, uh, which uh, in turn uh, makes the uh, area very uh, peaceful during the high temperature in summers. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's true. Good. So I, my message basically to all six of you is when we do research, whatever subject is given, not by me, not by me again, but by teachers. So go more deep into research. Because it's your knowledge, not teacher's knowledge. It's your software going into your hardware. Your hardware is your brain. Your means the, your skull inside. Your software is what's in the brain. That software. So and your young software has places to make folders very easily because you got enough space. In your hardware, there's enough space and these become little, little folders and you can open the folder. So moment a thought comes, that's a click to your computer. Thought is a click and it finished, goes to the folder. Isn't it? Isn't it? It's a click. What's your click? Your click is not the hand. Your click is the thought. So when you think, think, it goes to that folder. Oh, monuments, India. So you can talk about Jaipur, you talked about Hava Mahal, you talked about Taj Mahal, you talked about Kutub, Kutub Minar, right? You talked about these places, it's excellent. You talked about Ajanta. Nana, what did you talk about? Nam the Golden Temple. Yeah, the Golden Temple. Talked about the Golden Temple, the largest langar anywhere in the world happens and how it's all all by donations, all by uh, presentation to the Gurdwara. So all of you have great places so, to share. OK, all right, let's go to your questions now. OK, Naina, your question? Well, my question is, like, nowadays, most youths, Indian youths, especially Indian youths, Try to live uh, like uh, goes for a uh, try to live a better life in foreign countries rather than staying in India. Like, why is this happening? If you walk the Indian malls today, all the foreign showrooms are here. So goods are all here. Goods are all here. Cars are. It's I think basically the quality of life. They think could have it better there. When it comes to shopping, it's all here. Food, it's all here. Some go for higher education, which makes it, uh, and then, so I think every dollar gives you more money. Every one dollar is almost like 80, 90 rupees. So they think it's a lot of money and they could send back home also. But I think it's more, they, it's in their mind, quality of life. And also the, I think the space, which is India is very crowded right now. America is not. America is a large continent into probably, I don't know, five, six Indias. So there could be many reasons. What do you think are the reasons, Naina? What do you think? Um, I you feel like money? money is the main reason. As you know, the money. governments, there's a huge difference for the salaries between the private sector and the public sector. A public mm -hmm. sector, as you know, government jobs they get more salary. They have a lot of pensions, which are which are actually not needed, but 
the private sector they have more work but their salaries are less income but here in uae we can see the government and the private they are still uh, same salaries no differences between them what do you think ananya why does the youth go to overseas ma'am they think that might be the uh, most studies are uh, their educational purposes and they give extra knowledge on it and yes higher studies even uae uh, youth goes to overseas because of studies basically the, the uae doesn't have those higher education institutions as much yet anona what do you think ma'am i think safety plays a role um especially in kerala crime rates are a little high compared to other countries like canada or um the european countries so in our, uh, for raising a family i think people prefer foreign countries if you read if you listen to the foreign news you look at the kind of shootings going on anywhere so it's more of a perception but it's a, today there is a, the, if you go to the states it's not as safe you look at the kind of shootings because the guns there is no gun license as such whereas in india there is a total gun license to get a gun license is very rare here so weapons are not with the people whereas in the states in the particularly in the states guns are with the every household almost even the children can take the gun and shoot in the schools at which they been school shootings so i don't think security is a major reason it's more the money where you can earn and then quickly start earning because more hands are required so they can start working even at a gas station and start making enough money so it's like quick money what do you think elen what do you think is the uh, reason alvin uh, mary what are the reason elen you first uh, when i think for people going for higher education there are more scopes for better jobs on what they have studied so the income which they get might be more than the jobs they are hiring system might be good what do you think alvin alvin so i think along with what uh, everyone else said i also think that neatness and order of life and mm. law law enforcement is also pretty has a pretty big role to play because in india often i'm not saying that in other countries it's not as prevalent as in india but in india often laws can be modified to suit the person if you're a rich person you can just pay bribes and get it done with but in other countries sometimes there is more law and order and these systems are more strict so it's more the quality of life yes ma'am and the rule of law yeah first discipline on the road yes ma'am <laughs> mary you ma'am uh, like alvina said quality of life people uh, people from uh, people think that they'll get a better chance at life if they go to foreign countries mm-hmm. and they think they'll uh, have like much more better lives than they will in their own home so by by and large it's coming back to quality of life and more money quality of life includes having money in your hand and higher education and possibility of work quickly employment even if it's not very high end jobs at least you start earning your pocket money okay good naina you got your answers yes ma'am thank you okay albina your question it's a big big question what's your short question uh ma'am i think in a short my question would be in india police is rarely held responsible for the abuse and harassment and mistreatment of the uh, prisoners what action do you think that the government should take to make sure that this this, this judicial violence does not happen how should they tighten the legal framework it's come down heavily over the years because of heavy exposure and transparency and media attention and uh, where it is um, evidentially detected police officer has to answer a court of inquiry but come down very heavily though it's been it's been emerging it's taken time to come down but it's come down heavily now and therefore and then a great focus on human rights so lately a lot lately over the years uh, a whole generational shift has happened in the manner in which india polices itself 
but there is a mixture of old and new generation, old mindset and new mindset. The new youngsters are now much more comparatively more careful in their behavior towards the inmates or persons they've arrested with the focus on retraining and training of and also penalties and also threat of media or public exposure. So people have also sensitized. So that's a prevention. Yes, ma'am. But it's reduced over a period. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Ananya, your question? Ma'am, my question is, as technology is um, constantly um, evolving and impacting uh, us for various of aspects in our life, kindly let us know the current state and the future potential of virtual and reality. Well, it's going to take over all of you. Artificial intelligence, even your books, answers, essays can be written by Chatpat. Chatpat. In fact, they can even take your exams today. The chat, the, called the chat. What is it called? Chat. Um, chatbot. 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 They can write your essay on the. In fact, do you know what's happening now? Teachers are taking the essay exam right in the class without your phones. Say, write yourself. Because if the project is given to go home, the chatbot will do it. It's become so very sharp. And a um, lot of things are emerging with this chatbot. I think a lot to be seen, you've not seen, but artificial intelligence will answer all your questions now so that your brains then go dull. Artificial intelligence, every day there's a new program because otherwise how does the software company continue to make money? It's all about how much more you create, the more money you make, the richer you become in the world. So Elon Musk's then many who want to be Elon Musk's. So I think, but the challenge for you youngsters is continue to upgrade your skills in technology as they come, because that's going to be the, be the navigators for you. So the more, more you want to achieve, more successful, more keep upgraded on latest softwares, latest new programs and latest technology uh, as you grow. So along with your dancing, creativity, design, arts, technology is important for this, you, your generation, you're a very important cutting edge. Next question. So look out for the latest artificial intelligence now, not the latest software, artificial intelligence. It will start guiding. It will cook for you. It will clean for you. It will wash for you. It will write for you. It will even think for you. It will even take the exam for you if you allow it. Okay, next question. Who's next turn? Ananya, I've finished. Ananya? I've finished. Okay, Anona. Yes, Anona. Yes, Anona. 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 My question Anona. is, Anona. Uh, my question is, uh, attempting exams, competitive exams like NEET and UPSC uh, take a lot of time and motivation and students often tend to get worn out. As someone who's cleared such an exam yourself, uh, what kept you motivated throughout it all? I think it's the purpose you want to be, who you want to be. Why should somebody take a JE exam, slog it out and work very hard because they want to be an engineer. Why do they want to take the other exam? Because they want to be in, uh, in the MBA. They want to do engineering. They want to do medical. It's all about if, how much they want. So it's all about, it's not an external motive. It's what you want to make it to the top. That's what, it's your internal motivation. It's your internal fire, desire, passion, anxiety, the want, the hunger. The more you're hungry to be, the harder you will prepare. 
So there is no external motivation in this. It's a hard work. It has to come from within. And every one of us have something within what we all want to be. Some don't want to do anything. They can have an easy life. They can have an easy life. But if you want to be so and so, then you have to go through NEETs and JEs. Even university examination. If you want to bet, get the best university in India, then you sit for the university exam. Now that's a combined exam again. So it's all, if you want to be in the Delhi University in St. Stephen's or Hindu College or etc., you will sit for that and get higher grades. Sri Ram, these are institutions which are known for their late Lady Sri Ram. You will want that. So there are many colleges in the top grades. I've mentioned only a few. Ellen? Yes, ma'am. So my question is, like, being an IC, uh, IC, IPS officer is and risk is uh, job occurs away. Why is it so like? Same answer which I've given to an owner. Is your purpose what you want to be? Then you take that line. You want to be a doctor, you go to NEET. You want to be an engineer, you go to JEs. You want to be a bureaucrat, you go to UPSC. Driving factors was to work with the government. I had an option to go overseas to, on a scholarship to do post graduation and graduation. I chose to stay back because I wanted to stay back in India and serve India. So it's a wanting. What you prefer. Do you prefer something else or do you prefer a service to the country? I preferred service to be in my country and be with my parents. That was my want. My elder sister went overseas. She wanted to go overseas and study abroad. She went. So she's a Canadian today. She's by nationality a Canadian. And I chose to stay back, even though I was offered a scholarship from a foreign university. I said, no, I want to be with my parents. I want to work in India. So it's all your inner want, what you want. OK, Marine. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my question is, uh, India is already a growing economy with a well-educated and young population. But uh, rarely the vibe and energy seem to relegate into making our cities neat and clean when compared to other countries. What are we lacking after all, ma'am? I think it was a sanitation habit which we never got over. It's yeah. taken us a long time. Swachh Bharat Abhyan, it's only the last few years that lakhs and lakhs of toilets have been made uh, for Indian homes. Earlier, they built homes, but they went outside in the to... to to uh, ease themselves. But though they had the place, but they thought having a toilet inside the room house would be impure. I've seen this because I've been a part of Swachh Bharat Abhyan getting thousands and thousands of toilets made people's homes and government of India sponsored, spent a lot of money and state governments have pitched in money. Government of India pitched in, state governments pitched in, people pitched in finally to made houses because it was made mandatory. So that earlier habit of uh, going out into the fields, etc., not having a toilet in the house was like a culture, was like a habit. But once the government came heavily on it and saying, here's the money, build it. So money was given to the people to build by the state governments, respective state governments and government of India to build, no excuse. So we really went house to house to see that toilets were built, house to house found the place for them. And if so, those who did not have the money, oh, sorry, no place, we built community toilets so that they could come to a community toilets on a payment basis or even free. So a lot of homework has gone into to make Bharat Swachh last four, five years. Millions of houses. If you go to the website of mygovernment.in, mygov.in, you'll know how many millions of toilets have been made the last few years in India. And now um, it's almost like 90% uh, covered, villages and urban areas. But it's come over a period, but made a lot of difference. And it's enhanced female security because women had to wait for it to become dark to go to the toilet outside. It's enhanced women's security because now they have an in-house toilet. 
So Saina, last last three minutes if you could do a sum up. Children, you all are lovely and you're growing. So a few thoughts I'm going to leave with you and you take them forward with you. I'm going to share a little story with you that's coming to my mind. I once read a little story, it's a tiny story. A man asked an artist, how do you make such beautiful things out of stone? What did he say? He said, the beauty is already there. I just removed the extra stone. So that's what you're going to do. As you keep growing, you will keep removing the extra stone because you all are unique and beautiful. You don't have to be like anybody else. You have to be just you. And stone cannot be removed. Carving can't be done in one day. So trust the process. The process is very, very important. It's extremely sacred. The process of removing the extra stone is extremely sacred so do it with care do it with care excellent the other thing the other thing i want for you all of you is i want you to believe that god's resources are abundant and limitless make it a practice to start praying and going to the almighty with all your emotions, feelings, problems, your achievements, your apprehensions, your dilemmas, your, your achievements, your success, your joys, go to them, go to the Almighty with all that you feel. Develop your faith, develop your devotion. Make devotion your greatest strength. Lean on your devotion, lean on your faith, lean on God, lean on God. And the third, last little thing, two words I'm leaving with you because you have to figure it all out yourself. Nobody's going to come and give it to you ready-made. One word is discipline. Without discipline, nothing works. Nothing. And the second little thing which is extremely important is sometimes we have to understand that it's a comfort zone that's holding us back. Sometimes it's very important to step out of your comfort zone and embrace life. Why I have said all this to you today is because you're 13 and 12. And all this is going to be extremely handy for you as you grow. So keep this in your heart and grow with it. Lots of love to you. And a lot of love to your parents and regards to them. A lot of love to your teachers, to your school. A lot of love to Sharjah. So a lot of love to all of you. Yeah, thank you to your school and Sharjah completely. Thank you to this Emirates National School of Sharjah. All the students for having brought you all together for this book reading show. Thank you. Stay connected. We shall continue to celebrate many events together. Thank you and have a good day and our regards to your parents too. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. हमारी ऑडियंसेस का बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया सुनने के आप बच्चे हंसते खेलते रहो खुश रहो स्टे हेल्दी स्टे हैप्पी स्टे जॉयफुल टेक केयर जय धारी